Okay, so at this point we're ready to glue up. Now in gluing up, I've always found it's a very good idea to get everything that you're going to need set up and ready to go before you start. Uh, so here we have the um, some scales, we've got the glue there, we've got some uh, spreaders and sticks. We've got this uh, piece of wood here as a sort of table to do the gluing on. And we'll have the various laminates and handle already right side up, ready to get glued. And we have here on the other side, we'll have the foam set up with, it has cling film on it. We've got the ropes ready, we've got a little uh, box of wedges there, some clamps, a hammer, everything that we might need. Also, we have these things here. These are, it's a strip of, um, uh, strip of scrap wood, essentially. And it has on the back of it a very thin piece of rubber glued to it, and then the whole thing covered in cling foam. And we're going to use that for the back of the boat. We're going to hit wedges into it, and we don't want to hit wedges on top of the fiberglass because that'll mark it. So we're going to put this on, once we've got all of the laminates in, we're going to put that on top, then rope round it, and then we can wedge on top of this, and it doesn't matter if we damage this piece of wood. And the rubber will help just to spread the pressure a little bit and give it a nice, um, nice even pressure on the fiberglass itself. So the very first thing we want to do is measure out the glue. Now this is going to take, for this type of bow, this is going to take about 110 grams of glue. So we want 55 grams of each of these into the cup, mix that up, and then we're ready to go. Put it on fairly straight like that. Again, we want to press this down and sort of rub it in to the glass. And then I find this sort of motion gives a nice even spread of the resin. So we have the fiberglass on, and we have the maple on, and the maple has got glue on the back of it here. So the next thing we're going to do is just place the purple heart laminate on top of there, like so. And then we want to take the handle block and apply some glue just to the back surface of this. And again, the same procedure. We just want to get plenty of glue on there. Run it right the way down and then sort of smooth it out. And make sure that we've got no exposed wood. So that's the handle about ready. And these still have marks on, so we're pretty much in alignment. And our datum peg is now going to stop this from, um, from wiggling around when we put this clamp onto it. Now again, the clamp here only wants to be, you know, pressure, just a little bit of pressure on it, really. We just want to stop it from moving at this point and get it just a little bit of ooze going on there because we'll still have to straighten this up. We haven't put the washers up yet on this and we don't want to do that yet. If we do, there's a tendency that the cling film can get caught between some of the laminates and if it gets caught between the glass and the maple, it'll be visible uh, after the bow comes out of the form. So now, we want to do one of these back strips of maple, put it on here, then we'll glue the glass, put the glass on, then the protection strip, and then we'll start lashing it up with the, uh, with the rope. Now, I have a clamping point in the middle here, this is the, um, this is referring right back to the plans actually, but this is the, um, the uppermost part of the uh, deflex in this. Once we have that on, we can put these wedges up now that, sorry, the, um, the washers up into place, like so. And we can stick just, a, and again, another clamp just to hold this at the far end. None of these clamps are tight right now uh, because there will be little bits of discrepancy in here which will press down further when we put the rope on. So we just want the clamps to hold everything in position at this point, not to actually flatten them down. Same with this one. That's it there. 
Now these washers have been sort of strategically placed. And at this point they're, they're grabbing all of the laminates uh, at this section here. And as we tighten that down with the clamp, it's staying in alignment. So that's pretty good. Again, the rope has loops in it, which we can loop around the handle. We want to put a bit of pressure on this. Uh, not as much to snap the dowels or anything like that, but certainly enough to take up, or to start taking up, any of the slack between these laminates. Okay, now, if we can get that on one of them for now, that's pretty good. Right, we'll put a little bit of pressure on these clamps at this point, and we can put this one in place. This one is right over the point where the, sorry, this one is right over the point where all of the laminates come together and the fades come together. So we want a lot of pressure on there to make sure we get a nice joint on that section there. Alright, that's looking good. Now I'm going to do the same with this other side. And then I'll bring the camera a little bit closer and I'll show you what I've actually done here. Okay, that being that, um, we have everything glued up at this point, we've got the rope on. The last thing that we want to do is just tighten that rope up with these hickory wedges. So I'm going to start at this end here, and I'm just going to put one under each loop of the rope. You can normally tell just by tapping these in when they've got a good bite, you know, they get progressively difficult to slip under the rope. That nice. So you just want a bit of ooze coming out of here, you know. Um, another point just on the, uh, the mix-up of the glue, mixing it up, I believe I did... 110 grams for this pot, and that was just right. The, the pot is um, is absolutely empty, so a little bit more wouldn't be a bad idea, just in case, you know. Maybe up to about 120 grams would probably uh, do better. Right, I'm going to finish this last piece off. I'll show you around it once more, and then we'll stick it in a hot box. Okay, so, so you can see here. Um, after the wedges have been put in, the glue, the resin is just oozing out between the sides there and that looks to me like it'll be an okay glue joint. Alright, so the next thing we've got is to stick it in the hot box. Uh, I'll just make a little bit of room on the side. Under this bench I have a hot box. I'll switch it on. Now inside of here, Inside of here, and there's quite a bit of stuff right now. It has become used as a sort of storeroom also. But um, essentially, I have three 100 watt bulbs, and we have this insulated, and it's that's it. It's a hot box. So I'm going to stick the bow in there, and I'll just bring the camera and get a little close up of the hot box just to show you what we've done with it. Um, this used to be a it was an experimental kiln, actually, to dry out some old uh, scaffolding boards that we were making furniture with. And it worked quite well for that. So this one actually has got a dehumidifier in one end. And um, it, it does get up to some temperature, so it's a, it's a good box. The bow itself, at this point, should sit in there. Let's try not to hit the bulbs. Right, so now that's going to sit in there for about six hours and it should be dry and ready for the next stage at that point. Okay, glued up in the hot box. Six hours later, we'll bring it out and see how it looks. Thanks.